What's up everybody, I'm Matt Gary, and in this episode of Coding with the Force, we're going to find out what non-primitive data types are in Apex. Alright everybody, welcome back to this Introduction to Apex tutorial series where we learn the fundamental skills necessary to become a developer in the Salesforce ecosystem. So today we are going to go over what non-primitive or complex data types are in Apex. Um, if we want to make a really, really long story short, non-primitive or complex data types are basically anything that isn't a primitive data type. And if you remember from the previous video in this series, the one right before this one, um, we went over those primitive data types. So anything that's not in this list, well, it would be a complex or a non-primitive data type. And those consist of things like any object in your system, so the out-of-the-box account object or a contact object or a custom object that you've created, um, they consist of uh, non-primitive data types consist of um, collections, so lists, maps, sets, and I know we haven't gone over what any of those things are yet, but we will soon, so just stick with me. And um, uh, objects created from user-defined Apex classes, which Again, we'll see you soon. I'm going to go over an example of that in just a minute. And objects created from system supplied Apex classes, like the uh, cryptography class that uh, Apex has just pre built for you to use. So um, let's just open up our uh, my IDE of choice anyway. You can open up your IDE of choice, it doesn't particularly matter. And if you have no idea what an IDE is, Go back a couple episodes and uh, uh, where we go over IDEs and how to set them up for Salesforce. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do, uh, just so that we can kind of check this out together, is create a new Apex class and we'll just call it non primitive types or something. Because this is just an example class. <laughs> For us to look at non-primitive data types and um, you know all the things that there are to them so uh, the first first things first non-primitive data types with the exception of out-of-the-box s objects like account contact etc they are not things that are just pre-built for you like um, like primitive data types are, right? I can do nothing and I can just start using strings and integers and whatever else in my Apex code. But if I want to use a non-primitive data type, I have to declare that somehow, right? Whether that's through creating a new object uh, or table in, <clears throat> in Salesforce through the user interface or whether it's creating an Apex class myself that defines an object type, um, right? So let's just take a look at a few of those scenarios. The first thing that we'll take a look at is just S objects, how an S or, you know, how it works as a non primitive data type. So basically, um, we'll just say we want to declare a new contact. Maybe we want to do work on contacts in our system and we just want to do it like so. So basically we are declaring this <coughs> variable cont as type contact and we're initializing a new contact. Now this is clearly a different way to initialize a variable than we talked about in the primitive data type video where we just did something like this said integer uh, number equals one right we're not having to do integer number equals new number or sorry new integer or anything like that we're just saying this is an integer and we want to set it to one but when we're doing complex data types we're always going to create a new 
uh, instance is what this is called, a new instance of that variable type. So additionally, right, like if I um, <clears throat> wanted to create a list, I could create a list of integers, so a list of primitive data types. But I would, again, initialize it as a new list of integers, much like I did above for the contact object here, right? So you can see the way that you initialize these variables is a little bit different. You create a new initialization of the variable every single time. It might not always look like this when you get a little bit more advanced. You don't necessarily need to initialize it um, this way, but that's how you'll you'll typically see it done. Contact equals new contact, list equals new list, um, et cetera, et cetera. It's much like if I was going to, you know, for some reason, call this Apex class here that I have in my system, class E service. If I know we haven't really gone over a class initialization either, but you know, I could say class E service, class E equals new class E service, all right? So you can see a trend here already. Uh, the way that you initialize these variables is very different than an integer or a string or a double or whatever else, all the other primitive data types where you just set them equal to something immediately, right? Right now I'm setting them equal to a new thing, uh, a new instance of something. So um, there's uh, that first thing there. The second thing that you'll notice that is very different between primitive and non-primitive da data types is something that we talked about in the last video and we actually demoed together, but I want to go over it one more time because I want to pound this fact home because you absolutely must know it as a developer. You absolutely must understand it. It's pretty critical or else you end up doing a bunch of things that you shouldn't do. And that's that non-primitive data types are passed by reference. They are not passed by their value. And so let's just go over what that means again. So I'm going to create a method. And I know, again, we haven't gone over methods yet. That's very soon, very, very soon. But let's just create one together so that we can demo this pass by reference and by value. So we'll say public um, void method passing data. And then we'll create another one called public void method receiving data. And we'll have it take a contact, not a health cloud contact, just a regular old contact, and an integer, right? And let's just grab these two variables here put them inside this method here. And then we will call this method that's receiving the data and pass it our contact and our number. All right. Now, what's happening here is we're declaring this integer of type, uh, this variable integer of number, uh, called number. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. We're declaring this variable that we've named number as type integer and setting it to one. We're also declaring this uh, variable named cont as a new contact. And then we are passing both the contact and the number to this method receiving data here, right? Now, we're going to try and manipulate both of these within this method and see what happens after we do that, right? So we'll take this contact here and we'll say contact first name equals Tanya or something and you know last name uh, equals Harding and then we'll put the num equal to 12 now what the next thing that we'll do is just see you know that when this method gets called after it's done operating so after this stuff happens in this method 
we come back to whatever the next line is in the method that called it, this method passing the data, right? So we'll say system.debug, and we'll say uh, this is the contact value. <clears throat> and we'll say system.debug. This is the number value. All right, just like that. And we'll actually add a couple things. Uh, first things first, I'm going to actually copy these, put them above the method call so we see what they are before we call the method. And then we'll see what they are after we call the method. OK? So let's save this. Hope that it actually saves. I think it should, but you never know. And, uh, huh. Identifier name is reserved. Number. Ah, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Let's just change this to num. When it says uh, that name is reserved, it means that the system, like uh, Apex uh, itself, uses that word number for um, something else, and you shouldn't be using it yourself. All right, so. Uh, let's just call this class through the Apex Anonymous window. So I'm going to pop up the Apex Anonymous window down here. And I'm going to say non primitive data types, non, sure, non primitive types equals new, non primitive types. And we'll say non primitive types dot methods pa method passing data. So basically, um, what we're doing here in this Apex Anonymous window is we are saying, you know, uh, let's create a new instance of this class here, which we're going to go over a whole bunch more in just a second, so stick with me. And then we are going to call the method, this, this method passing data in here, right? So let's uh, press play and see what happens. Uh, or Unexpected token in the field on line one. Huh. What did I break here? Uh, and apparently nothing. <laughs> Every once in a while that just doesn't work, and I'm not really sure why. Anyway, so let's take a look at this. So we've run this code now. Um, and let's look at our debug logs that it output. We see that we got this is the contact value. And so before, right, so up here if we look at our original code, um, this is before we called the method. This is the contact value. <clears throat> and you can see the contact has no values in it. And then if we take a look at this is the contact value after, we can see that that contact value got first name and last name added to it after it went down into the method and it had that, th those values added to it. Alternatively, we can see that the number value that we passed in stayed at 1, the number before and the number after are both 1, despite us setting num equal to 12 in here. And that's because non-primitive data types get passed by reference. So what that means is you aren't just sending the value 1 or the value new contact into um, this method, right? Instead, what you're doing is you're sending a reference to this variable into this method. And so when you update this variable, our contact, uh, our cont variable of type contact within this method, well, it reflects itself back in the other method uh, after, after it's done executing. And that's because of that pass by reference concept, right? All non-primitive data types, they are passed by a reference to the original variable, right? Alternatively, non-primitive data types are not done that way. It literally just sends the value 1, right? When I'm in here, it sends the value 1. If I change the number to 12, it doesn't matter. Basically, I'm just changing the number 1 to number 12. I'm not changing this original variable that I passed in because there's no reference 
to that variable anymore. I'm not passing a reference to that variable when it's a primitive data type. I'm just passing the value of it, the value one, right? Super, 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 de-duper, <laughs> important. Um, now, the third big thing that we talked about before is the idea that non-primitive, or sorry, primitive data types, we do not have the um, ability to change anything about, right? If I wanted to add new functionality to the integer data type, I can't do that. It's not possible. But if I wanted to add new functionality to the contact object, I absolutely can do that, right? I can do that in a number of ways. I could um, come over here in Salesforce and go to the object manager and find the contact object. And I can add new fields to that contact object. So if I wanted, you know, a new field called, I don't know, taco intake, I could do that. I could make that field and then I could use that field in my code. And I've effectively updated, um, you know, my non-primitive data type to have something new that I can use. And you can also do that by creating, um, you know, record types or validation rules or whatever else. There's a lot of things that you can do to change that non-primitive data type to do and to operate how you want it to operate. And on top of that, if I wanted to, I could go completely outside of the realm of you know the regular objects within Salesforce, um, which by the way are database tables. So I might start referring to them as database tables because that's what they are when we talk about regular objects in the object manager. <clears throat> but if I wanted to go outside of those um, you know, Salesforce objects, I could even create my own data type technically, or not, not data type, sorry, my own um, not non-primitive data type. Um, so I could create a class that represents an object. And we'll just call this, you know, the taco object, right? Because why not? If you can't tell, I'm a huge fan of tacos, specifically Taco Bell. It's a good time. Um, so we've got this class called Taco, and we want it to represent, you know, a data type. So we're going to create some fields on it. So we'll say like string taco type, and we'll say, um, I don't know, integer number of tomatoes. Is that how you spell that? I don't know. And then we'll say something along the lines of, you know, who knows, um, string uh, suggested amount of taco sauce, <laughs> right? And now I've got this new non-primitive data type. And what I can do is first save this. And I can come over here in my non-primitive types class. And I can initialize this object, right? Taco, um, taco object equals new taco. And now what I can do is I can do just the same kind of thing as I did before. Maybe I want to pass in type taco to this thing. Um, taco object. Taco Tuesday. Let's go with that. And then we'll say taco Tuesday dot. Uh, it's not wanting to pull it up, and that's okay. I just need to refresh my definitions. So we do taco dot taco type equals cool taco taco object got to make sure we pass it in and then we can say taco 
Tuesday dot number of tomatoes oops equals five or something, right? And we'll just do the same thing we did before so we can illustrate how cool it is to create our own uh, data types whenever we want them. And so we'll say taco object. And we'll do the same thing that we did before so that we can see how these cool custom types that we can create for our code also are non-primitive and passed by reference, right? So I'm going to save this again and hope that it saves and then fail miserably because it doesn't. Um, right. I do have to declare these as public variables. That is important. <laughs> Uh, I know we haven't gone over accessors uh, yet, but we will. And we'll talk about what the difference between public, private, and everything else is. So OK, now, now I think we ought to be all right. Um, we'll save this, and I think we'll be good to go. And we are. So we can see, much like the contact we have everything being set to null previously and then after the method uh, runs we get a number of tacos or sorry number of tomatoes five and taco type is cool taco right so cool 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 and the cool thing about this is this taco here we can do lots of things too like we can add new methods that do its you know special fun functionality for the taco so we could say change type or you know i don't know make into burrito or something right obviously this isn't a real salesforce situation but now i've got not only this object that i can uh, set values on this new non-primitive object that I've declared, right? Or what's frequently referred to in many cases as a wrapper class. Um, but I also have methods that allow me to personally write new logic for this, you know, taco type that I now have out there in the world, which is uh, pretty cool. So non-primitive types, unlike primitive types, um, are not immediately provided to you by the system, right? Uh, they are passed by reference, not by value. Uh, you initialize them a little different, right? So like we talked about before, you don't just say integer equals one. You say contact equals new contact or taco equals new taco or whatever else, right? And the last thing is that you can actually create new functionality for non-primitive types. You can add new methods. You can add validation rules. You can add fields and, you know, tons of other stuff. So the, uh, the, there's really no, no limit to what you can do with a non-primitive as opposed to there are plenty of limits with a primitive data type, right? Um, yeah, I think, I hope anyway, that this um, has been helpful and it's uh, you know been pretty pretty straightforward anyway. In the next episode, we are gonna go over variable scope and what that means. So, um, if you want to know more about the Apex programming language and you enjoyed this video, then make sure to subscribe. Actually, hit the like button because that helps a lot. And hit the bell if you want to know when the next video is coming out. Uh, anyway, that's it for today, guys. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.